Hello, Mr. Bellows here from Manchester Communication Academy, English teacher and literacy lead. I'm here with two students from Year 9. Introduce yourselves. I'm Atu Sharman, I'm a student in Year 9. I'm Kevin. And we're on a trip to France and Belgium on a World War I centenary trip around some iconic battlefields and places where iconic events and poems and pieces of literature took place. And this is our journey. Yeah. The Germans said if that happens, we will end up going to war with Russia. Morning, day two in Belgium. We arrived last night quite late, had some tea. And then we spoke to some of the soldiers um, who were with us on this epic journey about some of their tours they've been on, most notably Iraq and Afghanistan quite recently. Atasham, lucky for him, got to try in a modern day soldier's uniform. Have a look on the website for that brilliant picture. So it's cold, it's clear, but it's looking nice for another great day. Here I am, day two with the boys. Hello. How you doing? Hello, good. It's really have a good... cold here. It is really cold, but I think it's colder in England. Just no, it's right not. It's, uh, it's four degrees. Minus. Very four cold. Degrees. Tell me where we are, guys. In the museum. Where? In Belgium. Yeah, we're in Passchendaele. So we're going to read about which soldier? Uh, Sharif. A soldier called Sharif and about his time in the trenches. And the boys are going to do creative writing exercise on... On uh, the living uh, conditions no, the of soldiers at the time. Yep. In the trenches. So we're going to smell some of the smells from the World War One trenches and what the enemies used. Natasha, tell me a fact first. So basically, in 19, 1918, Hitler was gassed by the France French. Yeah. He so he used his in mustard gas. And that would damage his eyesight, which sent him to the hospital, which we later found out that Germany gave up. Smell it then. <laughs> really bad. Do you regret that, sir? Yes. A toxic gas. Oh, that one's quite nice. Really? It's nearly old, isn't it? Aerosol. talking to the boys and we've already written a descriptive piece about what it would feel like to be down here, to be fighting against the Germans, knowing they're only a few yards away. Claustrophobic. We're going to go down. Right, let's go down. Those people come out, we'll go down the next one. Oh, sorry. So what we're going to look at is a poem called Bayonet Charge about going over the top and this was where they would go over the top to go and fight hand-to-hand -hand combat. Just been to Passchendaele, to the Passchendaele Memorial Museum. Now we're in Poparinga in um, a cemetery um, commemorating the dead. Um, Attach and draw next to him what we're about to do. Uh, we're told to um, look through the gravestones, as you can see. For example, in this one, you can see his name, which was A.H. Thompson, a soldier, a private actually, as you can see right here. Um, and we get other information, like for example, this cross means he was a Christian. And this was just a badge he was given or something. Yeah. And so, and what's your task you're going to do now, Kevin? What we're going to do is, uh, so we picked our role, 
and we'll try to find which one's the soldiers is the youngest. So right here, uh, it looks like this might be the youngest, which is age 19. And, but, and we also have to find the oldest as well and record it in this book right here. Lovely, let's go do it. Here we are at the Talbot House, known as every man's place, every man's, every man's, every man's club. Thanks boys, this is a place where soldiers came for a bit of respite from the war, came and it felt like home really, they came and didn't have to drink here but they could play cards, they could pray, they could sing, could play piano, somewhere that really felt like home and you can see that by the decor. And you boys, what are you getting up to? We're writing a letter to our parents which, as, as a soldier that has just uh, come from the trenches. So, so this place is quite like a heaven because after facing battle out of family and trenches, you would feel exhausted and uh, mm. like really, it would be really like much of a hell. And once you've uh, come here for like from like for like a day off, you can really see um, the contrast and the contrast between these two places, like um, how much uh, better this is than the trenches. And do you feel like you've seen that today, coming from the trenches here? Now, do you feel like you've seen that of course, journey? Yeah, it's like um, the trenches will have much worse uh, living conditions than yeah. this place. Mm -hmm. Pretty muddy in the trenches. Yeah, compared to this idyllic place. What have you learned today? Go on, my good friend. Um, so, in our little group, we started talking about how the Congrat ship is like, uh, like a big family that people would treat each other uh, the same, no matter their rank or anything, basically. That's good. Here we are at the Menin Gates. Natasha really is going to be putting down a reef yeah. shortly, representing the school. Yes. You can see him as MC a tie on, looking very smart. Yeah. Are you excited? Like, uniform one. That was a close oh, question. You're a star. How are you feeling about tonight? Very excited. You should be very proud to be yeah. representing the school. Yeah, not very many very people get tra the chance to do this. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Day three, we, today we're going to the very famous Battle of the Somme. As you can see, it's quite flat land, quite open landscape, where one of the most famous battles in British history took place. Um, right, Kevin? Yeah, okay. <laughs> But unfortunately, it was one of the biggest uh, days of losses. British military lost 20,000 men on one day. And we're going to go and read a little bit of Exposure, one of the poems on the GCSE anthology um, and other poems by Wilfred Owen and other poets and see how their attitudes changed from 1914 where they were a lot more positive about the war and patriotic how they changed throughout until 1918. If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign land, field, that is forever in England, 
There shall be in a in that rich earth a richer dust concealed. A dust to England bore, shaped and made aware. Gave once her flower to love, her way to Rome. A body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by the sons of home. And this, this heart, all evil shed away, shed away. A post in the eternal mind, no less. Give, so, give somewhere back to the thoughts by, by England given. Her sights and sound, dream happier as her day. Her laughter learnt, learnt her friends and gentleness in hearts at peace under the English heaven. Thank you very much for <coughs> the The Battle of the Somme, 1st of July 1916. One of the bloodiest battles in British history. We're right here on the very fields where the first offensive took place. British fighting from over in the sunken lane. Over to this road to take the village. Wilfred Ayn. Our brains ache in the merciless iced winds that nive us. Wearied, we keep awake because the night is silent. Low, drooping flares confuse our memory of the salient. Worried by silence, sentries whisper, curious, nervous, but nothing happens. Watching, we hear the mad gusts tugging on the wire, like twitching agonies of men among its brambles. Northward, incessantly, the flickering gunnery rumbles, far off like a dull rumour of some other war. What are we doing here? The poignant misery of dawn begins to grow. We only know war lasts, rain soaks, and clouds stack stormy. Dawn massing in the east, her melancholy army attacks once more in ranks on shivering ranks of prey. But nothing happens. Sudden successive flights of bullets streak the silence, less deathly than the air that shudders black with snow. With sidelong flowing flakes that flock, pause and renew, we watch them wandering up and down the wind's nonchalance, but nothing happens. Pale flakes with finger in stealth come feeling for our faces. We cringe in holes, back on forgotten dreams, and stare, snow gaze. Deep in grass intimacy pictures, so we drowse, sun dozed, littered with blossoms, trickling where the blackbird fusses. Is it that we are dying? Slowly our ghosts drag on, glimpses of the sun fires, glows, crusted dark red jewels, crickets jingle there. For hours the innocent mice rejoice, the house is theirs. Shutters and doors all closed, on us the doors are closed. We turn back to our dying. Since we believe not otherwise, we can kind fires burn, nor ever sun smile true on child or field or fruit. For God's invincible spring, our love is made afraid. Therefore, not love, we lie out here. Therefore, we're born, for love of God seems dying. Tonight, his frost will fasten on this mud and us, trembling many hands, puckering foreheads crisp. The burying party picks and shovels in their shaking grasp, pours over half-known faces. All their eyes are ice, but nothing happens. Here we have a huge, exploding mine near Thietval, or Thietval. Hello, day four in Belgium, France. The final day of our trip. We're back at the Menin Gate. We're going to go and make some pottery, some commemorative items for those fallen dead. Then we're going to go see some German graves. Um, and then we're going to start to make the trip home. But it's been great, boys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tasham's doing his reading today from Journey's End. Are you very nervous? You laid a reef right here for the last post. So it's final day. MC is open as normal, apparently, even though it's really badly snowing. But we'll be back soon. Bye. So we're making our remembrance sculpture, which is, which are, it's going to be laid around somewhere far from it. And what's it meant? What's it commemorating? It's commemorating the soldiers that died in the war. How are you going to personalise it? Yes. Good answer. And then if you come up here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.
Kevin, sorry, who just finished that off. You can explain the features of it, please. So this is the head, this is the arms, yeah. and this is the spine, the back spine. So this is like this. What does it represent? So this is a basically a victim, and uh, seriously, yeah, then it's like the arms are wrapped around his head. The spine? The spine? Oh, actually, not sure. Natasha. Natasha, then what the spine represents? Uh, the spine represents the, like, a, a symbol of strength and strength, trust. Yeah. And where's the stamp of approval? The stamp of approval is right here. Let's have a look. There we go. Lovely. Now Natasha's going to start his pottery expert on to him. Right. Kevin, very much on brand here. Okay. Do you like his the MCA logo going on his commemorative pot. Okay, here we are at another cemetery on day four. Atasham and Kevin are looking What's for anything that stands out compared to the other cemeteries that we've seen. I that was, is that the so what stands out immediately, fellas? The crosses. So oh. the lack of crosses and... Uh, that the graves are like in the ground, like slabs. Yeah, slabs. And look at the writing, perhaps suggest they are what soldiers? German. It's Germans. Now, I was reading something about some of the graves that had been demolished, perhaps, by some of the Belgians, because they were perhaps angry at some of the Germans who'd fought against them. But we'll have to see what the boys come up with. We've got another reading coming up. Me and Natasha we're going to do, and Kevin's going to film. Decent, aren't they? I mean, outside the newspapers. Yes. Louder. Yes, I remember up at w Wipers, we had the man shot when he was on patrol, just at dawn. We couldn't get him in that night. He lied, he lied, laid out there, groaning all day. Next night, three of our men called out to get in, him in. It was so near the German trenches that they could have shot our fellows one, our fellows one by one. But when our men began dragging the wounded man back over the rough ground, a big German officer stood up in the trenches and called out, carry him! And our fellows stood up and carried the man back and the German officer fired some lights for them to see by. How topping. Next day, we blew each other's trenches to blazes. It all seems rather silly, doesn't it? Yeah. It does, rather. Now, it's the final day. It's minus four. <laughs> I know it's cold in England, but it's really cold here. But we're surviving. Very last stop on the trip on day four. We are at one of the biggest commemorative cemeteries in the world. Can't even see the end. And our boys, Natasha and Kevin, we've been given a soldier from Manchester. Born on Queen's Road in Harper Air, where our MCA is, we're going to go and find his grave and leave a message for him. From the main section, into this little part where our Manchester soldier lies. Name? Um, his name is Walter Garner. Walter Garner, which we've got a couple of Garner Richardses at school. Um, uh, and we're going to lay... We found him. He's oh, up there. One, two... Garner there. <laughs> Private Garner. And can one of you read the message we've read to him from MCA? Loud as you can. To Walter, there's no, there's no better tomorrow without remembering the past and remembering you. From MCA, our city was saved by people like you. You are our Manchester hero. Names? Uh, Luke at Shaman. Kevin. Put it in. Put it in. And so ends our trip with commemorating someone locally to us and our wishes from MCA.